We're asked to compute the inverse Laplace transform of five divided by the quantity s to the fourth plus s squared using partial fraction decomposition. We just found the same inverse Laplace transform using convolution in the previous video. I thought it'd be helpful to compare that method to the method of using partial fraction decomposition. Performing partial fraction decomposition on five divided by the quantity s to the fourth plus s squared gives us five divided by s squared minus five divided by the quantity s squared plus one. And therefore we can write the given inverse Laplace transform as the inverse Laplace transform of five divided by s squared minus five divided by the quantity s squared plus one. But let's go ahead and show the work for the partial fraction decomposition. To perform partial fraction decomposition, we first factor the denominator of s to the fourth plus s squared as s squared times the quantity s squared plus one, giving us five divided by the product of s squared and the quantity s squared plus one. And then to set up the right side, recall we view s squared not as a quadratic factor, but as a repeated linear factor s. And therefore we set the fraction equal to the constant a divided by s plus the constant b divided by s squared. Again, these first two fractions are from the repeated linear factor of s. Then we have plus a linear factor of cs plus d divided by the quadratic factor of s squared plus one. For the next step, we multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD, which is the product of s squared and the quantity s squared plus one, which gives us five equals as times the quantity s squared plus one plus b times the quantity s squared plus one, and then plus the quantity cs plus d times s squared. For the next step, we clear the parentheses, and then we equate the coefficients, which is shown here in the last equation. In this form, we can now solve for a, b, c, and d. Notice on the left side, we only have the constant five, and therefore b on the right is equal to five. There's no s term on the left, and therefore a is equal to zero. There's also no s cubed term on the left, and since a is equal to zero, c must equal zero. There's also no s squared term on the left, and since b is equal to five, we know d is equal to negative five. And now I perform substitution for a, b, c, and d in the first equation, which gives us the partial fraction decomposition of five divided by s squared minus five divided by the quantity s squared plus one. For the next step, let's write the right side as a difference of two inverse Laplace transforms. We have the inverse Laplace transform of five divided by s squared minus the inverse Laplace transform of five divided by the quantity s squared plus one. And now let's go ahead and factor the five from both inverse Laplace transforms, which gives us five times the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by s squared, minus five times the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by the quantity s squared plus one. And now we refer to the table on the left to determine the inverse Laplace transforms. The inverse Laplace transform of one divided by s squared is equal to t, and the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by the quantity s squared plus one is equal to sine t, where in our formula omega is equal to one. And therefore the inverse Laplace transform of the given function of s is five t minus five sine t. I hope you found this helpful.